Mouth paws. Um, today we've got this 14-year-old dog that has a mass over its left shoulder. And so just to get you oriented, that's the spine of the scapula there. That's the acromion. That's the spine up there. The rest of the scapula is kind of like this. And so we're going to remove this mass. It's been graded as a grade one soft tissue sarcoma, completely encapsulated. You can see that it's very movable. Um, and so we're not going to have to get very wide margins on it. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel. Make sure you turn on notifications so you'll get a ding on your phone the next time we live stream. So literally, because the skin's not even attached to the tumor at all, I'm going to get a fairly close margin on this. So again, it's a grade one soft tissue sarcoma. And so it's not going to metastasize and it's not going to be highly invasive. The skin is very loosely mobile over the tumor, so we should be able to just get that out and close it pretty well. Now, if I'm not able to close it, I can always do a Z-plasty over here. Um, Z-plasty would be kind of oriented in that direction, like that. So we will go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to remove the mass in an elliptical shape, and the reason why we do an elliptical shape is so that we can close it without getting a dog ear um, at the corners. And so can you pull up on that for me, please? So we have Heather scrubbed in with us, and Heather, uh, Heather has never scrubbed in surgery before. She's a human physio that's now studying veterinary physio. And we've put her to work here. Do our skin incision on the other side, so we'll just have you pull it that way. Is that fatty tissue? Yes. Yeah. From Portland, Japan, and Egypt. Nice. Yeah, if you guys can let us know where you're watching from. So we've got Portland, we've got Japan, we've got Egypt. to say that besides helping animals, live streaming is one of the most rewarding parts of my career right now. It's just really fun to interact with everybody and the community that we've developed all over the world. And then the questions that I get from the vets by email about cases and stuff, it's really fun. Dr. Bupendo is in Familia, and someone from Yorkshire. Yorkshire, that's right. Nice. So, Heather is from Yorkshire. And someone from Lithuania. Tell Charles that his teacher says hi to him. Who's his teacher? Is this really somebody that was from my past and my career? Dr. Brian. Oh, Brian Peel. Hey, Brian, how are you? Can you pull that back? Brian is very famous in his own right as an orthopedic surgeon primarily, an arthroscopist, one of the head surgeons at Gold Coast, and I didn't know you watched these, Brian. Now you can't tell anybody any stories about from when I was a vet student. That would just be rude. Okay. I feel a bit safer then. 
Right, so I'm down to the spine and scapula. So this is infraspinatus right here. Supraspinatus is up there. Spine of the scapula. And I'm kind of taking a little fascial plane from over the supraspinatus. That's actually kind of armor transversarius there. Let's come around the other side. Um, so good question. Um, lipos so the, the difference is grossly liposarcomas are going to look more like soft tissue sarcomas and less fatty, whereas lipomas are obviously very fatty. That's the big difference. And then histologically, uh, that's where the real difference comes out. So this is the underside of the tumor. You can see that we've got nice fat covering in all directions, so we've got no worries about this being an incomplete margin. Can I please get some mepivacaine? Yes. So now we'll just clean up the bed, make sure that we've addressed all of the bleeding, because I don't want a serama to develop later on. And before anybody asks, I am not going to drain this. So I'm not going to put a drain in here. Drains are vastly overused. All right, so that's um, trapezius, omer transversarius, right? Yeah. Infraspinatus, supraspinatus would be underneath there. Yeah, acromion of the scapula. You can feel all that if you want. So we're just getting our mepivacaine. Well, if you see Brian again, tell him I said hi. Uh, Mepivacaine, so long-acting local anesthetic. Can I get some OPDS, please? Okay. Uh, yeah. Good question. Does the surgical margin, is it the same for infiltrative lipoma as it is for liposarcoma? Pretty much. You're going to want to get your two to three centimeter margins in all directions with either one of those. Liposarcoma, you might try to get an even wider margin. I'll get you some scissors, Heather, and you'll just cut at about four centimeter, four millimeters length and just cut the one that I have held up vertically. Oh. So down bottom there, low, low, low. The yep. About four millimeters in length. Actually, go ahead and cut the other one as well. Down the bottom? Yep. So these internal stitches that will dissolve? Uh, these are internal stitches that will dissolve. So this is polydoxinone retains 50% of its tensile strength for four to eight weeks in the tissues. I'm 
Let's cut them both at about four millimeters at the bottom. Yeah. Is there any harm in using a monofilament non-absorbable uh, suture material for this kind of? Uh, is there any problem with using a non-absorbable? Uh, no. So, so example of that would be nylon. Um, so the question is from Piyush internally is, is there any problem with using a non-absorbable monofilament um, suture for this kind of procedure? And the answer is, to that is no, there's no problem. My, nylon is a non-reactive suture. Um, you know, ideally or in theory, you should only have the suture material there as long as you need it for the tissues to heal. But I'd rather have something there for too long than for not long enough. Um, and so, and I do know another surgeon that uh, was a specialist, and the only suture material he had in his practice was nylon, and he used that for everything. You got uh, uh, by the name polyamide. It's not a nylon, but similar to nylon, and it's a monofilament. Monofilament, yeah. Uh, I tend to use it in all kinds of this, this kind of procedure where I put a lot of tension. Yeah. And I use it. And then it's cheaper. It's yeah. Cheaper so I just see the comment that Brian has a teaching center in Utah. And Brian's just gone completely nuts with his... So he sold his practice in Houston, and he's op opened up four new specialty hospitals as well as continuing education centers. Can I get some more OPDS, please? Thank you. So I'm doing these kind of inverted cruciate sutures as an interrupted pattern just to get apposition of my deep tissues. And then I'm going to come back and do an intradermal over the top. Can I get you to just hold that for me, please? Sad if you cut my knot off. <laughs> so the recovery for this dog should be pretty straightforward. Yeah, so about two weeks of restricted activity, and that's about it. Since we haven't really cut much muscle, yeah, and it's quite simple. yeah. under any tension. It's really not. So I won't have to do that Z-plasty. What's a Z-plasty? So it's a procedure that you do to reduce tension in the skin. Okay. You make a Z-shaped incision in the skin and convert it into an N and that really reduces a lot of tension. Could that happen first after you've sutured? So I would, like I would suture it usually first, see how much tension there is, and then decide if I needed okay. to do one. Can I get some 2 PDS, please? Somebody says that I may come visit Melbourne next year. If it would be okay, that would be great. Just get in touch. Um, you can email... Peter dot 
Hammond, spelled H-A-M-M-O-N-D, at southpoles.com.au, and he can organize your visit for you. So peter.hammond at southpoles.com.au, or you can email me directly at ckuntz1 at mac.com. So C-K-U-N-T-Z, the number one, at mac.com. I'll get you to run that for me. So just a little bit of tension. And then when I pull the suture tight, you let it go. Keeps wanting to exit through the skin instead of through the intradermal layer. Um, now, Sam, yes. we will use an off-site bandage on this. Thank you. Good job. So this is Heather's first time scrubbing ever. <laughs> I think she's done a great job. She'll have to learn how to glove herself, though. <laughs> that was the hardest bit. That is the hardest bit. So I've lost more blood than my amputations. So this is how much blood we've lost. Usually I do about half of that for an amputation. Thanks, Piyush. See ya. So Piyush is leaving us and going to scrubbing on a spine next door. put some big interrupted sutures in the skin just to relieve tension at the skin edge. Some big cruciate sutures. I'll tell you one thing that Brian Beal, a couple of years ago, told me. You know, when you were a vet student, we didn't think you'd amount to anything. <laughs> Let me pull down on that. So 
I'm just burying this knot. And then cut that really short, right up against the skin. Yep. All right, so I'll just put some interrupted or cruciate sutures in the middle of the incision to try to reduce some of that tension. Though there's not a lot of tension, it feels pretty good, but just add a little safety margin here. Um, I have no lectures in the States planned right now. Um, I'm going to ACVS in Oregon in October, but I, I have not been asked to lecture there. Charles, how can we come and learn and work with you? So you just have to contact again peter.hammond at southpaws.com.au and he can organize it for you. And we do have people coming from all over the world to come for a couple of weeks. Usually we limit it to about two weeks because we do have a, a fair number um, fair number of people wanting to come. Brian Beal is one of the nicest surgeons around. He actually, I'm not even sure he is a surgeon. He's so nice. He doesn't have enough of an ego to be a surgeon, put it that way. You deal with some big personalities in human. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, humans are less, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So Pete's email address is peter.hammond, H-A-M-M-O-N-D, at southpaws.com.au. peter.hammond at southpaws.com.au. I don't know Dr. Van Gundy. Who is that? This is going to be a bit tight. I can finish it. I have to use the O. All right. So that's pretty much it. Um, I'll go over and check to make sure I've answered all the questions. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel. Make sure you turn on notifications so you'll get a ding on your phone the next time we live stream. And I'm just looking.
just reviewing the questions. Okay, well that's pretty much it. So um, uh, hopefully I'll be live streaming a few cases tomorrow. It's really great to hear from everybody and especially to hear where you guys are all watching fun. Um, so I will again talk to you soon and I am taking a couple of weeks off um, starting next week. Uh, actually probably in a week and a half I'm taking off. So I'll be here for the next week and a half and I will continue to live stream. Uh,